not about the paperwork that goes with the cars. <laughs> it's all about the cars. Matt Gibbs is here from Sunrise Automotive. Matt is my mechanic. He's Robert's mechanic. He's Robert's mom's mechanic, Joe's mechanic, Dan's mechanic, Chase's mechanic. I don't think there's anybody here who you don't work on the car. Um, uh, you also sell cars, Crossroad Auto Sales, which is why I bought my car and my last car, the before that one, well, that was a three-week-old car. <laughs> I had it for three weeks. And uh, well, good to see you, Matt. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good. So I, I told you I was going to start with a funny story. Ready for my funny story? Let's let's hear it. So you sold me a 2005 Buick Rendezvous with 83,000 miles on it. It's beautiful. I love this car. You even let me take it to Chattanooga. It's just a test driver. <laughs> All right, so the other night on, let's see, was it Saturday? Saturday, Robin and I were playing music on the porch of one of the historic homes for a Christmas candlelight tour that they were doing. So lots and lots of people were coming in and out, right? So at the end of the whole thing, we played for three hours. At the end of the whole thing, we're done. And there was a guy there. I guess he was the husband of one of the wives who was volunteering because he was standing out there for a while chatting with us. So when we're all done, we get the instruments, we put them into the rendezvous, and we're getting ready to go. And he's coming out, he goes... You're kidding. That's a rendezvous? Oh, I had one that looked just like it. I traded it in. It had almost 85,000 miles on it. She made me trade it in. I would do anything to get that again. I hate the car I have now. I want the rendezvous back. Robert said, $10,000, you can have it. <laughs> I thought, yeah, then I'll call him out. Is that red car still available? <laughs> <laughs> we get the red car. Uh, but anyway, I, I mean, I, I almost said to him, this, this might be your car. I mean, he was describing everything, the amount of miles and everything. So, huh. I don't know. And he misses his rendezvous. He misses it. He, he, the one he got, I think he said he replaced it with a Suzuki, I think. Uh, and he just, he, he used to move refrigerators. Or, or he, I think he's a landlord. That's what it was. So he would sometimes carry refrigerators from one place to the next. And if he said it was perfect, he put two refrigerators in there. Wow. Yeah. Take out the seats. He would take out the seats to do it. So, so I got a, a, yeah, like a little mini truck, don't I? Yes, you do. I can carry things around. It's a multi- so As long as I don't get pulled over, because registration's not right yet. <laughs> yeah, I'll let the uh, audience in on this. It's kind of an inside joke. The registration hasn't been right yet. And Matt thought, thought he was bringing me the complete corrected one and it's not even the same car no it's got your name got on my it, name though. on it yeah so i could go to your place right now get in that little red car and the policeman could pull me off i'm sorry officer it's registered <laughs> to me <laughs> oh. uh, so how are you, are you playing on tra- are you pl- taking the show to tuesdays after the new year yes okay yes Do, does robin know that yeah I, I, uh, yes, I, yeah. I, I, we just uh, we just. Oh, that told this him. just happened. So yeah, Joe just said we need to talk to Robin. So this show is going to be a Tuesday show. We're going to we're going to move it to Tuesday. Okay. At ten. I wonder if it'll change anything about I don't the know. show. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it does. Get a new theme song. And oh no, I like my song. You like your song? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so people coming to you to get their cars ready for... Uh, oh, and it's so nice, by the way. Robin's car also had a starting problem. Oh, talk about that a little bit. When, let me explain to the audience what happened. When Robin tried to start her car, it sounded like something was shaking really bad. Like knocking. I mean, heavy. So I said, you know what? Maybe that's the starter loose. Philip said it could have been the the, uh, the oil filter was getting ready to fall out. Is that right? Uh, here, Here's the deal. I don't know. Because you didn't work on it personally. Well, I had to, I was called out of the office for a family emergency. Oh, okay. Everything all right? Uh, I don't know. Okay. So, um, so I, I, I've i been kind of out of pocket okay. the latter part of the last week. But But it was knocking when she tried to crank it up. And I don't know anything. And I know I told you that I'm trying to guess as, I mean, what do I do? I do a radio show. But it sounded like like, like maybe a bolt, because this happened to me when I was younger. A bolt came out of the starter somehow, it was one of those long bolts, mm-hmm. and when I would start the car, you could hear it rocking in there. Mm-hmm. And apparently that's not what it was. Mm-hmm. 
But but Philip did say that the uh, the oil filter was just about ready to fall out. Yeah, if and if that's the case, then then uh, that that wouldn't have made a noise either. No, no. But there was a lot of electrical issues uh, apparently. Well, it had you know it was it was time for for some stuff to be done to Robin's car. Mm. Uh, spark plugs look like they've been in there for too long. A long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> But now, but see, the good thing is when she got in her car after you finished it, it was like, oh, I can start. I don't have to worry in the morning about right. cranking it up. Yeah. And that's the way I feel, too. You know, when you get in, that's, that's all we really want, us non-car people. Right, just to I mean, I think, do what it's supposed to do. I think most people are non-car people. They just like, like yesterday we went to this thing with, with Joe with the Shriners, and there's a bunch of guys with their Harleys. They love, and they can talk Harleys. If I ever got a Harley, I would say, I don't know, it's a motorcycle. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be able to have that conversation. You wouldn't even, it, you if you had one, you wouldn't, your personality wouldn't be to find out about what you have, or you just, it just doesn't. Not really, it runs. I, right. do I, I don't worry about my car. I mean, I worry about it. I just want to sit in it, turn it on, get the radio going, and go. Yeah, and I can understand that. I mean, you have this. But you think a Harley driver is different. Well, I, I, no, I won't say all of them. I would say a most lot of, of them. Most of them, because the, because a bike is a it's a different kind of an animal. Isn't right. It? It's you know it's definitely something that you know a lot of guys are into their bikes. A lot of people are into their cars. You know, you have a lot of people that think they know all about cars, and 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 at the end of the day, they you know I would challenge their knowledge. I wanted to start. I wanted to be able to have passengers because I don't want to tell somebody they can't ride with me if they need to and i want to be able to carry stuff you know that's right. the only, only three things i want right you you look at a car as a tool i guess yeah. you know it's not as some people look at a car as part of their per, it's part of their po- personality it's part of their culture have you ever had somebody buy a car from you as a gift for somebody else mm-hmm. oh, all the time that's a cool idea especially you know Parents buying cars for their That's what I was thinking, yeah. kids and yeah. stuff like that. Put a big bow on it? Yeah. <laughs> Where'd they sell those bows? Oh, you can buy them. Bows R Us? Yeah, well, b- Bows R Us. <laughs> oh, the one, you know, we have one that has a magnet on it. You know, you just. Uh, oh, really? It, yeah, you, oh, that's a good idea. And you, and you ask, can you please bring that back? <laughs> you know, you can use it for. Oh, you, it, oh, you have one. Mm-hmm. You have a big magnet bow. <laughs> when you, you loan it out when somebody oh that's a good idea what well, color is it red <laughs> big red bow uh, do you, you know one of the things I'm, I'm glad of that I don't have is that little red car because I loved the fact that it was a convertible but I was I was next to somebody with a similar top and it looks like they can go bad pretty quick no well not quick but they can go bad pretty bad mm-hmm. when they go bad they go bad don't they they leak don't they yeah they can they can um so you have to replace them a lot and that one is not that old on that car too it was it was it would look nice yeah, yeah. no but i'm saying eventually it would need to be replaced yeah. is that true for most mm-hmm. convertible types yes. yeah. yeah and and uh, i have a source that that i can basically do a convertible top on one of those cars or like a ford mustang convertible or something like that for about 550 dollars so mm. they're not terribly expensive. The uh, the jump box. Can we talk about that again? Okay. How's it going? Good. Good people are coming in and get them. Yeah. Good. I, I know it was. My gosh, remember what was it? Just last week we did this. Yeah. A- and the phone was ringing off the hook for people trying to win them. Yeah. If you didn't win one, they're only a hundred nineteen. Right. Same right. price still. Yep. Hundred nineteen dollars. Yep. That, that is awesome. I wonder how many people have one. And then they find somebody who's stuck, like, in the parking lot, and they say, can you give me a jump? And you, yeah, okay, and you pull out this box, and they go, what is, that's never going to start my car. Yeah, all the time. People look at that and say, what is that thing going to do? Well, let's go to commercial. (laughs) We'll be right back. Uh, Matt Gibbs is here. If you have a question about your car or about any car, the number is 622-9622. It doesn't matter if your car is on the registration. You can still ask a question <laughs> about it. We'll be right back. The 
weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, plenty of clouds, a few sunny breaks, the high 71 to 75. Partial clearing tonight with lows ranging from the upper 40s well inland to the upper 50s along the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a nicer day overall, the high 73 to 77. On Wednesday, sunshine and some clouds, the high 74 to 78. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. This is Joe and Patsy Martone. Wishing you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. From WOCA. The Source. Here's what you may have missed on the John Tesh Radio Show. It's normal to wonder if the previous tenant still has keys, but ask the landlord because they might have already changed the locks. And if you send an email late in the day, set a good example by sending it with something like, I look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. That way the recipient won't feel pressured to answer you now. Please go for a steam before your workout. It'll loosen up your muscles. Make sure you drink a tall glass of water before going from a steam room to the gym floor for your workout. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Nestled in the heart of horse country, just off I-75, exit 354, the award-winning and newly refreshed Howard Johnson Inn of Ocala invites you to pamper yourself in one of our comfy guest rooms. Enjoy our free and fast Wi-Fi, heated outdoor swimming pool, 24-hour fitness center, and our deluxe continental breakfast. Other on-site amenities include a restaurant, putt-putt, golf, and a car wash. Go happy, go hojo at the Howard Johnson Inn of Ocala, proud sponsor of Friday Night High School Football on WOCA, The Source. Are you looking for a durable farm fence to keep your horses enclosed or a beautiful vinyl fence to give that finishing touch to your home? Seminole Fence has over 20 years of experience in providing quality fence products and services for farm and residential properties. Let them surround your property with a fence that provides privacy, security, and stunning appeal. Don't wait. Contact them today at 352-208-0959 for a free estimate. Seminole Fence, working hard to build fences and harder to build relationships. The Appleton Museum of Art has a full schedule this fall of studio art classes for all ages and abilities. Kids can enjoy after-school classes and special programming on school half days and the first Saturday of every month. Adults can take everything from calligraphy to painting to wheel throwing. For schedules and class descriptions, visit appletonmuseum.org or call 352-291-4455. Bring your creativity to the Appleton Museum of Art, located at 4333 East Silver Springs Boulevard. Located in Ocala, Rinstar Medical Research has offered a wide range of clinical research trials for 17 years. Rinstar conducts clinical trials for conditions such as migraines, memory decline, fibromyalgia, and sun-damaged skin. To learn more, call Rinstar at 352-629-5800. Help us create a healthier tomorrow by volunteering today. Please call Rinstar at 352-629-5800. 18 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One thing we don't need a whole lot around here in our cars is a heater, but I'm so glad on some of these cool mornings that I have one. Tonight, temperature's dropping to the upper 40s, it said. So, oh, really? Yeah, 48 is what it said. So oh. so I'll be glad I have a heater tomorrow morning when I'm driving in. Because you drive in early in the morning. I do. I do. When it's usually the coldest. That's usually right about yeah. the time that it's the coldest. So And, and I love having a heater. It, it's... I would rather have, like, if I had a choice, no air or no heater, I'd rather have no air. Even though 98% of the year is when you need an air conditioner, still, I can roll the windows down. There's not a whole lot you can do when you're cold. Bundle up, I guess. I like them both. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Well, see, and that's what I love about you. This is Actually, you're my role model when it comes to cars because you don't settle. If if you need new tires, you got them. If <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, if something isn't working quite right, you fix it. The brakes is a bad example. You know, or tires, rather, is a bad example because you need those. I don't know. On the way here this morning to the radio station, yeah, I pulled up beside this car, and I could see the steel coming out of the right rear tire. So I made the guy roll his window down. I said, dude, I can see the steel sticking out of your tire. They were completely bald. No tread and on the tires at all. Did he acknowledge that he knew it? He said he just looked at me and shook his head. But Well, see, like I, what I'm referring to is things like the window doesn't go down. Like if the window doesn't go down, I can live with that. But you don't. You're my role model. You say, no, get it fixed. What's yeah. the point in living with a window that doesn't work? Especially if it's the driver's side window. I know. Because that's, 
your drive through window window. <laughs> or bank teller window. <laughs> or you want to yell at the guy that just cut you off. No, you I don't want to yell at anybody. This is my uh, new resolution. I didn't wait for the new year. You're not going to yell at nobody ever again? Well, in the car. In the car. Okay. No, I might yell at No road rage. Me. Maybe I won't even do it on the air anymore. I, <laughs> I, I hardly yell at anybody anymore. I know, Larry. You're you're such a laid-back kind of guy. <laughs> You have to really get mad to yell at somebody, don't you? It depends. I don't know. I don't know how to measure anger. I, I can uh, do it, though. <laughs> do you, does your eye ever twitch? It does. Yeah. And see, I know I'm mad when my eye starts twitching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. But I, but I, but I think road rage is, is something I should uh, disengage from my, my world. Yeah, I, I agree. Are you, are you guilty of it? Oh, yeah. I, I remember me and Joey were going somewhere. I can't remember where we were going. And we were driving, and I'm driving down. I think I was on – no, I was in town. I was driving down the road, and this guy did something stupid. And and I, and I it was 30 seconds after he did something stupid, I asked God to forgive me out loud. And Joey, Joey says, Dad? Why did you ask God to forgive you? <laughs> I said because of my thoughts. <laughs> just because you know, yeah. I was thinking some bad things for this guy. That Were you did. hoping to get in Iraq? Were you? Because I do this and I think that's not a good thing to hope. Right. Like somebody goes speeding around, they come up. I mean, I think they're going to rear end me, and then psh, the last minute they go around, and I'm only going the speed limit. Hello, it's not like I'm going slow. And then I'll say, I hope you get in Iraq, and I think, oh, geez, that's not a good thing to hope for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't hope that they get in a wreck, but I hope that I, uh, I in, in a few minutes I'm gonna see. Oh, some yeah, I hope you see lights. them pulled over. Okay, well that's a that's a fair hope. Well, that's actually saving their lives, and then they can say, oh yeah, this, and saving other people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about under the hood of a car? You ever work on Volkswagens? Yes. Oh, you don't like them? No. Are they the same today as they were in the old days? Oh no, no, no. Are they nice? They look nice. Volkswagens look nice. You don't like them? I'm glad they're not a sponsor. I'm glad they're not a sponsor. I, to be honest with you, uh, because of who I am, I wouldn't allow them to sponsor me, me Your show. or my show. Really? Yeah, now they could do whatever they wanted to with the radio station, but if they came to me and said, hey, we want to sponsor your radio show, I would probably say, well, I wouldn't even probably say, I'd say, no, I'd rather pay. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! But they look so nice. They, 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 they looks. You know, I, I, I look at a car, and I don't look at the looks of the car. Is, isn't it the, the same company that makes the Audi? Okay, they don't make the BMJ. No, no. Okay, BMW. That's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. What's BMJ? A record company. Yeah. I'll, Sorry, I'll BMJ. <laughs> <laughs> Never worked on a BMJ. <laughs> Never even seen a BMJ. That's too funny. All right, so is the Audi a good car? No. no? They're a Volkswagen. <laughs> I'm probably going to get hate mail now. <laughs> good morning. You're on the air with Matt Gibbs, owner of Sunrise Automotive. Great. Good morning. Let's get down to business here. Go ahead. What do you got? Uh, way back, uh, many years back, I always was told by people that were in the knowledge that, like, in the middle of winter, you should run your air conditioner for a couple of minutes just to get stuff circulating, and the same in the summer is running your, your, your heater just to get the juices flowing. Is there any truth to that? No. No truth. <laughs> plain, there you go. That was simple. Uh, the years ago, years ago, back in the 80s, um, I would have said yes. You know, every once in a while, flip it on, turn the compressor on, so all the oil and gases don't, you know, and get them kind of moving a little bit. But that's not the case anymore. Um, now, if you look underneath the hood of your car, you could have the heater on, and your compressor will still cycle. And the reason they did that was to keep it going, uh, especially up north when they don't use the air conditioner near as much as we do. So it was a way for them to the manufacturers kind of keep things going keep things moving as far as your heaters concerned um the 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 water flow there used to be heater control valves and all that stuff is basically gone now 
and the, the water flow is constantly going through the heater core it's just broken up in the uh, up in your dash there's a hot side of your dash and there's a cold side of your dash and the hot side's always hot and the cold side's always cold when the AC is running so and then you know and warm comes is by mixing the cold side and the, and the hot side and that's what ver brings a um, a variation of temperature into the car so you don't have to run AC anymore uh, a lot of times even if you turn on your defroster it automatically causes the compressor to click on and to activate so even though you have it set on oh, hot oh, with really? your defroster on the compressor is going to run oh really yeah didn't know that how often, do you, how often do you recommend flushing your radiator once a year at any mileage well, here here's the deal. It's a, a lot of the new coolants that are out are all synthetic. Like GM uses Dex Cool and Ford uses this and Toyota uses that. Um, if if it's a newer car with the synthetic, I would say every two years. I know with Dex Cool, just from experience and being around the stuff, it it doesn't do well after it's been sitting in a car for for a long period of time so i would say with the new synthetic it's it, it'd be every two years if it's got the green glucose based type coolant do it once a year okay and it, thanks Matt. you're welcome i gotta remember next year when i'm after i've had my car a year i gotta remember i hope i remember to do this. i'm sure you'll you'll yep. you'll ask I'll, me we'll be on the air and you'll say something i'll say larry you need to get your cooling system done then and i'll just come you'll and get say it. okay i'll get it done and then i'll see you in about four or five months after that <laughs> see i don't like that about me it got to be better than that that's my new year's resolution to be a better car owner okay i'll help you i think i'm already a better yes, car you, owner i think so and why do you think it i think so because when i just put the that tag on the back of your car yeah. i looked inside of it and it's not nice. so messy yeah it's nice <laughs> you keep, I don't know, keeping it nice. you just put a tag on my car yeah Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the license plate is now a different license plate? Yes. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to stop right there. Is it? You know, this has been, you know, usually this show is like, bam, it's over. Boy, this show is just lingering on and on and on. <laughs> so, I have a, so, the, so the number on that in the registration is the correct number. It's it's the correct number plate number just the just wrong, wrong year make a model number <laughs> uh, okay so should i put that in my glove no no i need to take this with me i wonder how many times a police officer has said i, I need your uh your registration and insurance and the guy opens up his glove compartment and he says hold on i gotta find it it's somewhere among all these gloves i i, I wonder if that's ever happened I don't know. I I would not say that that's probably a common thing here. A common thing? Just a lot of gloves? Yeah, just a lot of gloves. <laughs> that's what they were actually designed for. And it was for the woman more so than the man. It was for the woman. Men, men didn't wear gloves? Well, then? we did. But, you know, I think they would. They were. They've always, from the beginning, of, I guess, of building cars, they always had that. Nah, I won't say well, that. What did men wear? Uh, they. They. You know, you just you're a man. You just, just suck nothing, it up. just nothing you, on your that's hands. Right, you're a man. Drive cold. But but, you, but there was no roof. There was no heater. I mean, you had to have something for your fingers. Yeah. So you reached in the glove box and got out a get one of the ladies' gloves. gloves. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so driving gloves. Now it's not even a glove compartment. I don't think anymore. It's like a what do you storage call it? compartment. Is that what they call it now? Let's be politically correct. Is that what they heard? I mean, they heard us talking about the glove joke, and they said, and they said, yes, that's, I'm that's tired of them. We're tired of calling it a glove. Making box. people, people making fun of us calling yeah, it a right. glove compartment. It's like, and most of the new cars don't have ashtrays in them anymore. Yeah, mine does. Mine's not that new. Mine's a ten-year-old car. It still has an ashtray. Yeah. Yeah, you could use it for anything. I have one smoker in my life still, Doug. He likes to smoke. Doug does? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that? And now it's the end of our show. Matt, see, it didn't take that long. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a car issue, you need your car fixed, here's the bottom line. Matt is a guy to trust. He knows what he's doing. He won't sell you something you don't need. That's why I go to him. Uh, what's your phone number over My there? phone number is 352-690-1993. And if you need a new car, go to Crossroad Auto Sales, same exact location. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Larry.
Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. We will overcome the threat of terrorism. The message from President Obama who says there's no evidence the husband and wife who killed 14 in San Bernardino were directly involved in an organized terror network. But it is clear that the two of them have, had gone down the dark path of radicalization. This as the investigation into last week's attack continues. The FBI is tracking hundreds of leads that point to Middle East terror connections and a money trail. Law enforcement sources also tell us that Saeed Farouk practiced shooting at a nearby range 